Well, hello there. I'm about to calculate how sample size and power with an independent samples t-test. We're going to work with a problem from our textbook, and this is a sample size calculation. The item is we wish to detect a mean difference of 0.25. So a mean difference of 0.25. Let's call that delta. So delta is equal to 0.25. Delta is equal to 0.25. And it says for a variable that is a standard deviation of 0.67. So let's just think our sigma is equal to. 0.67. When we're calculating sample sizes, we often have to get these standard deviations from the literature or estimate them based on pilot data of some sort. How large a sample is needed to detect the mean difference or to de detect the mean differences with 90% power? Again, this is kind of a high power. Normally, we shoot for 0.8, so power 1 minus beta. Beta is the probability of a type 2 error failing to reject a false null hypothesis. So power is the ability to reject a false null hypothesis, so there's 0.9. And our alpha, or type 1 error, a false positive result is set at 0.05, and we're doing a two-tailed test, right? All right, so let's go ahead and write the formula here for sample size. The formula is 2 sigma squared times z1 minus Data. So it's a z associated with our power plus z1 minus alpha divided by 2. That's like usually your critical value when you're conducting a, a test, a, a t test or a z test. That this is for z test. This would be your z critical value. And we'll go ahead and square that like that. Okay? All right, so let's go ahead and fill in these numbers here. So we know that. Sigma is 0.67, so that 2 times 0.67 squared times, we need this z value associated with that 1 minus beta. Beta is 0 0.10, is point, so you have a um, probability of a type 2 error is 0 0.10, and power is 0.9 because they're mutually exclusive and those are the only two possible outcomes, so they must add up to 1. So we have z1 minus 0 0.10, z of 0.90. So I'm going to look in the back of my textbook where you find some kind of a z table somewhere. And in that z table, we look for the value of 0.90 as our probability. We find that 0 0.90 is associated with, I got 0 0.8997 and 0 0.9015, 0 0.9. 8997 is closer to 0.90. That's associated with a z value of 1.28. So this is 1.28 in here. 1.2. Ooh, what am I doing? 1.2. Uh oh. Let's see. There you go. Let me um, go back here. And again, make this other thing clearer. 1.28. All right, and then to this we will add the z associated with an alpha of 0 0.05 divided by 2. So that's a critical value in a two-tailed test, alpha of 0 0.05. The z, z value, which is 1.96, square this and divide it by sigma. And our sigma here was, there you go, this is better. Okay. Our sigma here was, that's not our sigma, excuse me, our delta. Our delta was 0.25, so 0.25 squared. So, all right, so let's go ahead and do all this work here. Let me not touch this again, so don't mess it up. 0.67, square that, and we get 0.4489, right? So that's going to be 0.4489 times 2, right? Times 2 is equal to... 0.8978, so we get 0 0.8978, 0 0.8978, 0 0.8988, okay, times 1.28 plus 1.96 squared, 1.28 plus 1.96, 
is equal to 3.24. To square that, we get 10.498. And that's going to be three decimal places, 10.498. 10.498 divide this by 0.25 squared 0.25 squared is 0 0.0625 0 0.0625 0 0.0625 so this would give us well, let's just finalize this here we have 0.898 times 10.498, that's 9.43 basically, and this is divided by 0 0.0635, gives us 150.835, 150.835, so 150.835, which is, the school is ground up. When we're calculating sample size, it's 151 individuals. That's 151 individuals to have a power of 0.9. Power of 0.9 is kind of large, so you're going to need 151 individuals per group. So let's make sure that's clear. 151 individuals per group. And you can imagine that's going to be hard to recruit and pay. There you go. All right. Bye.